And uh, as you know, uh, sometimes you have to make decisions uh, to go back to, to make uh, to step forward. And we're faced with that in building a squad. You can't have it all. And you've got to, uh, uh, you would like to, uh, have, you see several ways that you might be able to do something from my perspective to get better. But that'll end up costing you down the road. That's the pragmatic part when it goes. Uh, but uh, uh, I feel uh, as driven uh, as uh, I was when we first bought the team. And I was scared to death then. I'm scared to death now. Uh, I worry about what's happening out here around the, uh, the economy, the COVID. And I worry about our place in it in the NFL and where the place is in sports. I worry about that. But the thing that means the most to me and I care about, and I could probably be anywhere in the world, I want to be right now. I want to be here uh, with our team. Gary, uh Jimmy John's going Hall of Fame. Can you just talk about Jimmy for a second? Well, I'm, I'm never have a, a, a time of year like we are coming into training camp. But what I don't remember the very first training camp that uh, uh, we went to with Thousand Oaks. And um, I brought Larry Lacewell out, who was going to join the Cowboys four or five years later, I think, from the time we bought. I forget how many years it was. But Larry rode out with me. I didn't come out the day the team came. But I brought him out and a guy that owned a team in uh, 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 the Donald Trump League uh, that was a minority team in Donald Trump. And so we all three rode out. And I remember stepping out, coming out to Thousand Oaks, smelling that grass, being out where the great tradition of the Cowboys were with training camp. And it just, it just, I just had to pinch myself to think uh, that I got to be a part of that. I remember getting on a bus with the whole team uh, a couple of weeks later and coming up uh, Highway 1 from Thousand Oaks. And we pulled up right out here. And Al Davis was here. He had big black screens blocking all this off. Al Davis was out here, came through that gate, and Al Davis, and I looked up to him so much. And um, Al Davis came over. Boy, here we were, out here playing football, out on it. And I had died and gone to heaven just to uh, have that kind of experience. Uh, I was inspired uh, to uh, get to be a part of that, uh, but I never wasn't uh, afraid, uh, afraid that uh, uh, this thing was going to go the other way on you and a lot of things go wrong. We got a lot of answers today that we didn't have uh, back then at that time. But uh, the idea of being a part and uh, coming to training camp goes to my mind. And, of course, Jimmy was involved in those days. And so all of that comes to my mind when I think of those times. We actually were together here four and a half years. Now, I'd known him for 10 or 15 years before that or 20 years before that and uh, thought the world of him or he wouldn't have been the coach of the Cowboys. And so when I look back at the time that we got to enjoy and what happened to us during that time, uh, I uh, uh, go back to... Uh, uh, what Barry Switzer said. Barry Switzer came in the, uh, the office and uh, Jimmy had just left. And so Barry came down from Norman, Oklahoma to talk about getting the job. And he comes in and he said, where's Jimmy? Now Barry had coached us both. He said, where's Jimmy? And I said, Jimmy's gone. He said, well, that's not right. Get him, Get him in here. I said, where's Jimmy? I said, Barry, Jimmy's gone. We're sitting here talking about you being the coach. I said, what in the world are you so anxious to talk to Jimmy about? He said, I just wanted to get both you little assholes on this couch and ask you both, how could you fuck this up? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was Switzer. <laughs> I don't know what. Can you think about how, how you could do that now? I mean, well, well, I just think of those great times. And Jimmy's great coach. Great coach and uh, uh, ridiculous uh, that uh, uh, b b my role here was my job to keep it together. It was my job. It should have deference, should have had deference to something that was working good.
So those are the things that come to my mind. We had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We, we, uh, we just had a great experience. Is he tearing up? Question now? What? Do you think you could answer Barry's question now? I've never, I've never been able to know why. Uh, oh, I fucked it snap. up. That, not just that, oh, but anything snap. else. <laughs> no, I can't answer those questions. Did, did he just admit that he made a mistake? Huh? Would Jimmy go to Ring of Honor this year? You know, I don't want to do anything that takes away from this year. You know, he'll have a year, provided everything goes good. He'll have a year. Uh, that we also honor his Hall of Fame, Holy moly. and it will be this year, uh, in the in during the season at some time. David Baker will come down, so we don't want to do anything uh, uh, that uh, uh, makes that happen. Uh, I'm excited, actually. Uh, wow. uh, I uh, was the one that uh, that with David Baker when Jimmy was uh, uh, put in the the hall there two years ago or last year, not this year but a year ago uh, I said look the Cowboys need to play in the Hall of Fame game and he agreed and he wanted that to be done that was a condition well when they canceled the game last year uh, David said the first thing he did was call and say before not that it's a condition because we need to cancel it anyway but will you commit to play the, the next year so really we've been standing there waiting to play this game relative to this time when they come in the uh, Ring of Honor, and of course we've got two other absolutely great Dallas Cowboy players going in up there too. So it's really propitious that we've got that uh, uh, that we've got that game. Do you do plan to put Jimmy in the Ring of Honor at some point in your future? Let's don't let uh, knock all the fun off of, out of it. Wow. <laughs> Guys, he just admitted that he fucked up. <laughs> Excuse me, I can't hear you with that mask. Wow. I gotta see those lips. Uh, Jerry, uh, you were one of the big forces in getting the NFL back to Los Angeles. We're a couple weeks out from the first game of fans to so apply. How do you grade uh, the return to Los Angeles so far from a week for Texas? Well, uh, first of all, I, I almost Los want to Angeles leave has now. always been a jewel <laughs> and a jewel potential for the NFL, uh, oh not just the Rams, God. but for the NFL. In- and we have recently built that joins, uh, I'm not sure it technically joins, but it's right beside it, our NFL network. And the network headquarters are right there at the stadium. And so I've often used this illustration. I really hope that when we think of the entertainment capital of the world. When we think of Hollywood, rather than seeing that crooked sign up on the mountain Hollywood, what you're going to see is uh, SoFi Stadium, and that's when you're zooming in, and that's Hollywood. Uh, that's what uh, uh, the, the entertainment capital of the world is. And I think that stadium reaches that stature when I think about what it can mean for the NFL and uh, 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 Los Angeles and the and uh, uh, for everybody involved relative to sport. Uh, when we discussed this, I'm chairman of that committee, and, and when we discussed it, there was a debate about whether to move that headquarters from New York to move it there. And of course, that's the talent part. That's where we uh, have a lot of the content done, apart from the games themselves, are done with that group of people in the NFL. Well, that's the headquarters of it now and the headquarters of course is sitting right there and you can't miss it it's gorgeous and while we're out here i want to go down and take a look at it but i've heard it really works good all of that ties in to the picture of what you want the nfl to have going for it when you think of the perception of the nfl and i think los angeles does that and by the way that was my point about we need uh, uh stan Kroenke, we need uh uh, we need the Rams. We've got it all fits, and we need to be uh, uh, have that kind of uh, uh, aura and that kind of image about the NFL that that stadium will do. So it, it covered a lot of ground. Last one, Joe Trahan. Last one. Yeah, we've heard you get emotional several times in just these last few minutes. Can you share with us where this particular amount of emotion stemmed from? Well, I think it's being here today. Really, I started off. 
uh, a little sentimental when I actually went over and shook Deucey's hand. <laughs> but so I'm really <laughs> after Deucey ran me off his show. <laughs> I've forgotten it too, Mike. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, what you're seeing is uh, just how good it feels uh, to be here. Doggone, I uh, just as much as I enjoy this stuff, I get to thinking, well, are you ever going to see that again? Are you ever going to be sitting up there talking to everybody again? same time and so uh, uh, I do I, I guess I, I'm not going to apologize but I, I am sensitive today and emotional about the whole show thank you guys we got to run but not coming out here kill me just kill me and uh, uh, and frankly I'm, I'm not I know I'm patronizing but I'm not intending to it's you it is you. It is the show you make it and goes mm. back to our fans and, and the fact that we're out here kicking this thing off. And it's, uh, uh, it, it's such a, uh, an important thing. And then you look at uh, when the season started, we didn't have this kind of buildup, not just the Cowboys, but the NFL. Wow. And we suffered. We need the preseason. We need this. We need you. To make this thing go, those ratings are important. That uh, uh, to have you, and I'm not talking about the preseason game. I'm talking about the regular season games. Oh, we'll be at the first preseason game, by the way, Jerry. Thank Jerry, you. Jerry. Got all your stuff, Jerry. Oh my lord! Oh my guys, you know what? I'm sorry about. I, I apologize. You know, I got to go work with power tools. I got. I mean, I got to go out here and build some cabinets and things. But what you just literally saw was Jerry Jones admitting that he, excuse my language, fucked up firing Jerry uh, J- Jimmy Johnson. Uh, uh, oh, my God. And cried about it. It, it. You know what? Maybe this is one of those things that it's been a curse for the Dallas Cowboys because of his pride. You know, I've got, to, I've, I've got to get off of here and do a, do a video. After taking that big-ass swift, uh, 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 stealing some of Joe Boo's rum, maybe, my God, maybe the curse could be lifted. A- am I crazy to think that? Um, I'm glad that you guys were here to watch this with me together. Um, this was insane. That was, you just saw a side of Jerry, oh, my God. You know what? I, I got to just take a moment here for a second because James, there's something, goddamn it, because you can't look at a team that back in 2007 had 13 Pro Bowlers, had had a top defense and Tony Romo and all the weapons and stuff, and still just be just get the shit kicked out of us. It's sometimes no, no. See, I, here's the thing that that's crazy because the Cowboys had so many times where. You looked at it and said, that's a victory. I- I'm talking about times like, for example, where you're up by 21 points against the Lions and somehow the Lions come back and win. I'm talking about when you were up against the Green Bay Packers, not with Aaron Rodgers, but Matt Flynn, 26 to 3, and somehow you lose the game. I'm talking about calls that just end up coming out of nowhere and, and-, and literally shit that's just like, how does that happen? It's like this team has been cursed, and maybe it's because of Jerry Jones. You know, he, he had sold his soul to the devil. I, I, you know, this makes me question, you know, is this his come-to-Jesus moment of confessing his sins and saying, I am the reason why we have been freaking cursed for the last 25 years because of my damn pride and all of these things of looking for it and coming to Jesus and saying, I screwed it up, Cowboys Nation. I'm the reason why we have had this bad mojo going, and I'm, I'm looking for forgiveness. But, you know, you're right. DT, you were right. I, like I said, I, I need to take a moment before I go work on power tools. But to me... That was just like I had this whole feeling that literally just washed over me and gave me chills for Jerry Jones to say, to give that story. He's had that story for 26 years now of Barry Switzer literally saying, where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? Where is Jimmy? 
Because I want to get you two on the couch and say, how could you fuck this up? How could you fuck this up? Yeah, I'll take the job, but how could you fuck this up? Jerry literally, okay, Zeppelin fan, shout out to you, you know, Zeppelin fan. I've missed you a lot, man. You know, it, it's crazy. I have so many wonderful fans that have helped me along the way that, that I feel like crying right now because, you know, oh, my God. I, I, I don't really see, see if you understand the gravity of this. Jerry Jones's pride is the reason why we did not win more Super Bowls back in the 90s. It was Jerry Jones saying, I want the credit for being the guy who did this. I don't want to give any of this to Jimmy Johnson. And so it was me who ended up saying, you know, you know, if you remember, if you've been around that long, it was him saying with the team that I built, any number of 500 guys – could have coached that team to a Super Bowl and then proving, you know, saying that, you know, I'll bring in Barry Switzer. And they won not because of Barry Switzer, but in spite of him. You you saw the dynamic with 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 um Troy Aikman, you know, how it was that Troy Aikman didn't jive with it. And you saw how that team literally went down. And then you see this 25 years. This reminds me of the Lions with Lane Johnson who they ended up, you know, I, I can't remember the exact details, but Lane Johnson basically put a 50-year curse on the Lions. And you look at the Lions, who have yet to win a playoff game in over 60 years, that it was that moment where they dissed Lane Johnson. But Jerry Jones went on there and told this story, not being asked about it, but literally, basically, I think, asking for forgiveness of this and realizing and admitting to the whole world and, and you know, all of you that are here watching right now that I screwed up telling this story of Barry Switzer, Barry Switzer coming into his office and saying, where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? Hey, you know, Barry, you know, Barry, you know, I, I'm not talking about Jimmy Johnson. I'm talking to you because, you know, we're, we're working out where you're going to be the head coach. Where's Jimmy? Hearing that Barry Switzer, it's where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? I want to know where Jimmy is. I, I, Barry, listen, this is not nothing to do with, with Barry Switzer. It's just you and me. He said, no, I want Jimmy Johnson and get both of you on the couch and say, how could you fuck this up? Jerry Jones literally admitted the 26-year-long lie of, of, of saying that I am the GM, I am the God, I am the reason why the Dallas Cowboys won, and admitting that he was 100% wrong. He was literally repenting and saying, football gods, I was wrong. I am the reason why the Dallas Cowboys have been cursed. And I want to make amends for it. He, he he didn't want to talk about when Jimmy Johnson was going to be in the ring of honor, you know, and, and things, but that they were going to celebrate um, Jimmy Johnson being put into the Hall of Fame. I can guarantee you that right now that Jerry Jones is saying, I mean, before that, oh, my God, you know, I, I wanted to stop this and go ahead and do a video and put this video up. But, but he literally cried about this. Oh, my God. Um, but I can guarantee you that this has been, is going to be the floodgates opening up of, of, of Jerry Jones basically saying that I am the one to blame. Mark and Jerry full of shit. You know what? Fuck you, Onion 77. Okay, you know what? Screw you. Here's the significance of this because, see, I'm 55 years old. I'm 55 years old. I know that I have less years in front of me than I have behind me. And when you start thinking about your own mortality and how much time you have left, then all of a sudden you start thinking about the end and what you're on. He, he literally said, I would do anything to win a Super Bowl again. He then goes on to say that I'm the reason why the Dallas Cowboys have been cursed because of my own self. I fucked this, and he said, excuse me, fucked this up. So, you know, YouTube police, excuse me, but I'm going to put it out there exactly as he said it. I fucked this up. And I think he was reflecting on the 
25 years where he's been here year after year and loving and thinking, you know, I'm, you, you know, guys, I have put this team together and this is going to be the year that I can go ahead and say that I am the man that built the Dallas Cowboys, that I am the great GM, that I am the reason that we won those three. But realizing himself that he failed the Dallas Cowboys, that he is not the guy that should have been in charge, that I have screwed you, Cowboy fans. It's you guys out there that are supporting me and the NFL, that you guys out here that have been here with me. I want to basically, I'm thinking of, oh, my God. I'm thinking about um, Planet of the Apes, where the guy literally puts his hand out puts his hand out and says, I'm in your debt. I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. And I'm begging for forgiveness. And I also think, and this is where, you know, I'm going on, and it might be because I took one hell of a shot of rum, okay? I stole Joe Boo's. This is the good shit right here, too, right here, right, right now, okay? When, when, uh, guys, when you see... Me pull out this flask right here. Shout out to Joe Boo Sports uh, Report fan who who gave me this flask. Okay, this is the honor flask. Okay, this has got my um, Zaya. I'm not Zaya Rump. She is, excuse me. The Ron Zappa right here. Okay, you know, we we talking about you know a ninety dollar bottle of rum. When I pull this shit out, shit is real. Shit is real, and, and and I ain't had nothing to eat today, so that shit's gone to my head. So you're getting bonus time that is literally crazy right now. But to see Jerry Jones, who 25 years we've seen Jerry, you know, talking about, you know, um, Jerry Jones talking about, you know, I want me some glory hole days. And, and, you know, this team is here together and we put it all together to literally say, I fucked up. I fucked up. I'm the reason why we did not win more Super Bowls and look at himself in the mirror and say, I'm the reason, please forgive me, is groundbreaking. I'm sorry, it's groundbreaking. Because you can go back through, and like I said, I've had a whole bunch of rum here. I've had a whole bunch of rum here. And I may be crazy right now, but it's like sometimes some of the things that happen have not made sense, okay? You know, I think about the catch-no-catch. Everybody else, had that been any other team but the Dallas Cowboys, they would have said, that's a catch. That's a catch. Des Bryant caught it, you know, and, and it ends up being a touchdown. But so many times you look at shit, I mean, we look at it over and over, and after the game we see everybody saying, that was just wrong. How did that happen? I mean, how do you lose a game that you're up 26 to 3 at halftime to Matt Flynn? Matt Flynn and the Green Bay Packers. It's almost like the football god said, Jerry Jones, you are cursed. We're going to take this away from you. We are literally going to take this. We're going to make you think that you've got it, that this time it's in your hands. We're going to make it more painful because you're going to think you got it. And then you're going to feel the agony of feet. Our wrath is pouring down on you because of your own sins. I, uh, Jacob, you know, I, I wasn't even thinking about it, but, but exactly. The field goal with Tony Romo holding the football. Tony Romo never fumbled it. Tony Romo never fumbled it. How is it that happens in Seattle? All he got to do is hold the damn ball, let him kick it, we win. How has it happened that literally Dak Prescott and crew go down the field against Aaron Rodgers as a rookie? They literally, you, you, you don't expect Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys to compete after losing Tony Romo, but to have a fourth-round draft pick come through and beat like 
Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, something that a rookie has never, ever done, to go through and be 13-3, and three, to go to the playoffs, to fall behind Aaron frickin' Rodgers, but to have this rookie throw 304 yards, throw three touchdown passes, to go through and take the lead in the game and somehow with 40 seconds left, Aaron Rodgers with an impossible play where their team holds and throws a, a, a hail prayer to the sidelines and this guy catches it and ends up beating us. You look at that and say, how does this shit happen? How does it happen? Because the football gods were angry at Jerry freaking Jones. Tony Douglas, you are 100% right. Dak outplayed Aaron freaking Rodgers head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. But somehow divine intervention came through and kicked our ass. You know, I, I've got to do a live stream with my man, D2 Stu, in, in less than an hour. And, and I, I just feel like just, just saying... Fuck everything today. Just, just fuck everything today. Let me get Joe Boo's good bottle, fill up this thing, and just sit here and get drunk. Because we have looked for Jerry Jones for years to say, Jerry, you're not the guy. But it started out six months ago when he said, I am the GM. And when you're the GM and the owner, you can't fire yourself. What you got to do is literally fix yourself. You have to be the one that makes a difference. And, and we've seen, I, I'm, 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 I'm like literally mystified right now, guys. I am mystified. But literally, Lola, I, you know, thank you for, for that. You know, I appreciate everybody that's in here that's hearing a drunk Mark Holmes because uh, Jerry Jones, you know, Uh, you know, here, here I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you guys, you know what? Wow. Um. D2 Stu, what's up, man? You know, sometimes things happen in life that, that you think are just random circumstances. And sometimes you feel like things are guiding you. You can call me crazy. And, you know, when Philly 500 yesterday was like, oh, you know what? I want to bet you Joe Boo's head. And I'm like, no, I'm like, no, nah, you never bet anything more than you can ever lose. And that's where I actually said to him, would you put your kids on the line? I, I, for me to be here with you guys and actually carrying on a conversation is so crazy. I, it, I, I swear it is literally crazy. You're talking about a guy who could not put two words together could not speak in public, who was shy, who stuttered, who's dyslexic, who, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret here. I used to be so computer illiterate. And this is where you realize that life is crazy. And sometimes you kind of say, the fuck is going on? It would be 2002. I decided I was going to become more computer literate because I didn't know shit about a computer. I was a single parent that was raising my two kids, and, and I really didn't date because I didn't want to bring people in and out and have my kids see something that wasn't necessarily what you wanted. But I decided in 2002, on February, excuse me, January 28th, that I was going to be more computer lit. No, I'm sorry. It was actually a few days before that. It was actually January 27th. I was going to be more computer literate. And what I was going to do was I was going to start um, using the computer more. And I decided I was going to join match.com. 
I went on Match.com and made a profile because, you know, the kids were a little bit older and I needed to start trying to, you know, date. It had been, you know, five years since I'd been divorced. You know, Michael was about 10 years old or so, you know, and, and things. And I said, you know, maybe it's time. And so I went on Match.com and I remember my daughter had a Barbie camera, which was like a 0.3 megapixel camera and took some pictures of myself and went on there. And the funny thing was, my current wife, who I'd met in college and fell in love with, but she was like, you crazy Mark. Uh, we, you know, in, in college, you know, we can be friends. And we became great friends. And we kept running into each other over and over and over again. But it was crazy because she saw this profile that popped up on hers. And the next day we had lunch. And it was exactly a year later that we ended up getting married. And it's like, how does that happen? Okay, so you understand where I am. Uh, again, I've always been shy. But since I started doing the Joe, you know, good old Joe Boo, which originally started out kind of as a joke, it's always felt like there's something that's putting this together piece by piece by piece and coming in here. And now for me to talk to Jimmy Johnson just last week, and hearing Jimmy Johnson kind of say that, you know, he didn't come out like Jerry did, but basically said, you know, who knows what would happen and to be questioned about the Ring of Honor and stuff. And he said, you know, well, I've talked to Jerry and, you know, one of those days that Jerry's had a few drinks and stuff, it'll, it'll be finally when it all comes through was unbelievable. And to feel, you know, I'm probably crazy and I probably had too much of, my, of Joe Boo's rum to drink here, but I felt like. I had a connection with Jimmy Johnson, and now to know that two weeks from tomorrow that I'm going to the NFL Hall of Fame, and having met Jerry Jones, you know, and and uh, at commissioners' parties over the years and things, and talking to him, I have a press pass, and for me, I can go up and ask Jerry Jones about this, and to have this happen. To know that Jimmy Johnson is going to be at the Pro Football Hall of Fame being inducted. To know that Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys are going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That these For him to turn around and admit that I'm the reason why we did not win more is just crazy. This is like everything in the universe colliding and coming together to a head. And this is going to be crazy. And, and Joe Boo Sports is going to be there. Holy shit. Holy shit. And and it keeps I've been blessed by a guy who has said, Mark, I love what you do and you need to be out there more. To to I I am so literally living in, in like fantasy world like I'm gonna wake up from a dream. Because if I were to say what I would love to see is Jerry Jones repent and admit that Jimmy Johnson and him should have never left, that would be my dream. Uh, Christopher, sorry I'm rambling, buddy. I'm sorry. But I've got a whole wave of emotions that are going on. And, you know, if I'm rambling too much, you know, uh, you know I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being here, but you've got to understand, I had some of Joe Boo's rum, and I've got Jerry Jones admitting that he fucked up, okay? I, I'm just going crazy, and I've got a, literally a wave of emotion that's going through me right now that Jerry Jones has admitted. Uh, no, here's what, okay, okay, uh, Christopher, 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 Christopher. Uh, you got to understand, you might see at the Pro Football Hall of Fame Jerry Jones and Jimmy together. This is Jer Jimmy Johnson's, you know, uh, being put in the Hall of Fame because of the work that he did, and Jerry Jones admitting that he screwed it up and should have been more. And these guys will be there together because, of course, the Dallas Cowboys are playing. You don't understand. This is Jerry Jones facing up directly with the, the mistake that he has made over the last 26 years come to Jesus moment.
This is Jimmy Johnson being praised and joining those 349 other men as one of the greatest players and influential, influential players in the history of the NFL. And now Jerry Jones having to literally eat that shit and realize, what the hell did I do? This guy might have won me another one or two more, and I've been literally chasing this shit for 26 years to get this high. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. I tell you what. Whoever catches that first moment of Jimmy and Jerry in the same room, that's Jerry Jones going like this. Bro, you were right. I was wrong. Holy shit. I'm sorry if I'm a little emotional. Uh, you know, forgive me for being a little emotional on this, but for Jerry to do that, holy moly. Hawk, I'll call you back, man. I, I've got people that are calling. My man Dave's calling me and stuff, and Hawk's calling me. This is, uh, right now... Wow. Right now, this is literally like I'm in an alternate universe. I swear, I feel like I am in an alternate universe right now. You, you guys got to understand, people with money and power never, never admit a mistake. Never. This is a mistake that's gone on for 26 years, guys. Wow. Maybe I need to go ahead and end this, this stream here because, uh, like I said, that rum on an empty stomach, you know, that's the good shit right there, literally went to my head, and um, it's crazy. Wow. But think about... What Jerry said, and, and I started on this, and I don't think I finished it, but Jerry said, you know, when you're the owner and the GM, you can't fire yourself. I have to change. I must change. I will change. And you saw that start from the Dak Prescott dealing. No more did we hear Stephen Jones, hey, you know, Dak, <laughs> Dak, you, you, you know, you need to leave some money on the table for other guys. You got to understand you're the quarterback of the Cowboys and you'll get those endorsements and stuff. That shit went out the window. That shit went out the window. They said, Dak is the guy. You heard Stephen Jones basically say, Dak Prescott is a rare individual who has got skills, but beyond that has got the leadership role and that we're blessed to have him. I'm just like, okay, that's a change of goods. You saw them basically hire a coach that is a defensive guy. And instead of saying, we're going to micromanage you and you're going to go ahead and cook what we give you for ingredients. That you you got to look at this from, from a different standpoint. They've gone through and they have taken Dan Quinn. And Dan Quinn, you can see the imprint that he has put. They have let him basically say, these are the type of guys that I want on this team. Because the Cowboys ain't never, never drafted a one-technique guy. Now, be it that it was a sixth round. But they always looked at it and said, yeah, you know, one technique, meh, we don't need to worry. We'll just take a defensive tackle and throw him down there. That's good. No. But because Dan Quinn's defense is predicated on that guy, oh, Lord, now we got, got damn trolls. <sighs> Shout out to Mark Holmes Mullet, you know, one of those Philly 500 trolls that are up in here. Um, Philly D, you know, I, I, you know what, like, like I said, I, I don't know, you know, if Jerry's sick or not. 
um, from what I had heard a few years back that there were some things that were going on that they were basically, you know, that Stephen Jones was taking on more and more of the operation. But see, you know, I, I look at it right now and say, tomorrow's not given to me. Um, people always say, you know, Mark, you need to rest and take it easy. You know, I, I lost my brother who was only five years older than me um, a few months back. And we've seen so many people that have passed away that your own mortality, you realize what you want to do, as Shannon Sharp says, is every day you're working on your eulogy. And so that's why every day I try and do the best that I can to try and better myself and try and help others and let people around me know how I care, how I feel. Because at 55, I don't think I'm living for another 55 years. I know that the, you know, I, I only got so many left to, to finish the job that I started. Um, Mark Holmes Mullen and Alan S. Appreciate the Super Chats. You guys will be in our drawings that we do for, you know, uh, Hall of Fame gear as well as uh, Joe Bardi's and things like that. Um, I really see a whole lot of haters up in here now. I'm able to see, uh, wait a minute, I believe if curses, how far do you think you're going to do with the voodoo doll? Well, you know what, Keith, the funny thing is, is you can blame Joe Boo for 26 years, but Joe Boo's only been here since 2013. And for me personally, I, I'm not actually, you know, sacrificing chickens or, or praying to voodoo dolls and stuff. I really originally made Joe Boo because of the movie Major League and because of an Eagle fan who said that the Cowboys suck so bad that not even Joe Boo could help them. If you want to take it that far and believe that, hey, you go right ahead, you go right ahead. All I know is I like my mascot. And so I think maybe I've probably said enough on this live stream and, and things. Um, but for me, this was, yeah, you're right. One shot, one opportunity. This actually drives me even more to seek out Jerry Jones as well as um, Jimmy Johnson. I need to have that cooler beer for Jimmy. Um, wow. 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 Guys, you, you actually just witnessed something that I thought we would never, ever see. So, um, I'm going to be back in about an hour because my man D2 Stu is going to be in the house and we're going to be doing a fantasy football, uh, special, um, for you guys, of course, we normally will do it on Saturday, but now that camp is here, now that camp is here, we'll be ramping up our coverage of the Joe Boo Sports Report because now we'll be talking about the guys on the field. Um, I appreciate everybody that's being in here. What I'll probably do is, is I, I'm just going to cut from Jerry Jones literally saying, I fucked up that part of the video and upload this so that way people can see it. I, 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 had, I had a wave of emotion that has kind of washed over me, so forgive me. And I hope that I did not embarrass myself here. Um, but, wow, I, I, th this makes me really, really want to be at the Hall of Fame in two weeks. Oh, my God. This shit's going to be crazy, y'all. But you know how we roll. Hey, Thank you, everybody, who hit the like button and all that. Everybody that did the super chat, so my man Alan as well as Mullet Man, um, I'll get you all put in here, put in the drawings and things. If one of you Eagle Trolls win, we'll send you a Joe Barty. I'm not sending you Dallas Cowboys autograph stuff, okay? But you know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. <laughs> Yeah!